It was two weeks before my uh, robotic mastectomy. And one of my friends said, hey, you know, I'm not a doctor, but you need to look into this Tulsa Pro procedure. It's uh, non-invasive, non-surgical, it's focused ultrasound technology, and it could be the answer you're looking for. Welcome to Curing with Sound, a podcast presented by the Focus Ultrasound Foundation. I'm your host, Allison Preston-Smith. Today, we're speaking with patient Robert Palmer, a prostate cancer survivor whose story is both deeply personal and inspiring. Prostate cancer runs in Robert's family, and his father sadly passed from the disease, motivating Robert to prioritize regular screenings. However, during the COVID-19 pandemic, he faced delays in accessing routine medical care, and when he was finally able to receive an updated screening, he learned that he too had prostate cancer. Determined to explore his options, Robert chose Focus Ultrasound Treatment, is now cancer-free, and is sharing his story to encourage other men to prioritize their health. Welcome to the podcast, Robert. Hi, Allison. Thank you very much for inviting me to Curing with Sound. So just to start, what was going through your head when you learned that you had prostate cancer? Well, initially, just shock, really. Um, But uh, also what the implications were. My father had passed away in 2009 of prostate cancer. So I've been fairly diligent about, um, you know, checking my PSA and and um, just kind of stay on top of things. So when I learned, I was kind of shocked that my levels had gone up enough to, yeah, give me that diagnosis. And what treatments did the doctors talk to you about when you initially found out these results? Well, it was hard to believe, you know, that, that I was going to have to go through any of them. But robotic prostectomy and, and radiation treatments were the kind of standards, and I think are still kind of standard, um, although um, now I don't know that they are, they should be considered standard of care because of the breakthroughs that um, uh, focus of ultrasound can bring to the, to this disease state. And you did a lot of research before you even learned about focus ultrasound. Um, can you talk more about, you know, what you were looking for and why you wanted to research different treatment options? Well, it just seemed to me that in this day, day and age, my my options were limited. So I just looked for everything. The robotic prostectomy was was what was finally recommended to me. But uh, radiation, laser treatments, um, I looked into even, you know, pharmaceutical answers to, you know, what my problems were. But not, none of the treatments really seemed really sympathetic to what, a man goes through when they hear the words, you've got prostate cancer. And to be honest, I think society as a whole, they kind of look at prostate cancer as, oh, well, that's something that's you know, curable, but they don't look at what a man really, really goes through when told you've got prostate cancer and the implications and potential side effects of the current standards of care, if you will, uh, that kind of a man faces after that. What was your experience like working with some of the top doctors that didn't even know about focus ultrasound as a treatment option? The reality is, is that, you know, you could find the best at a certain treatment, but they, they're not always cognizant or, or knowing of other treatments or other modalities that could help your condition. And I'm sure the doctor that I found would have been one of the best at giving me a great robotic prostatectomy, but... You know, at the end of the day, um, just kind of doing more research and looking at, um, you know, what the side effects were, uh, how long recovery would be. They all kind of just um, left me feeling a little bit. Um, there's got to be something else. When did you first learn about focus ultrasound as a treatment option? I was, it was two weeks before my uh, robotic mastectomy. And I was, oh, wow. I was getting calls from uh, the people in the anesthesia department and scheduling this and scheduling that. And I, I was, I just didn't feel kind of comfortable with it all. And one of my friends said, Hey, you know, I'm not a doctor, but, um, you need to look into this Tulsa pro, uh, procedure. It's, um, non-invasive, non-surgical. 
Um, it's focused ultrasound technology, and it could be the answer you're looking for. Did you have any reservations about it, or did it? Was that another option that made you nervous? Um, it it actually didn't make me. It relieved me knowing that there is something else out there. And then once doing the research on, you know, this kind of treatment, this focused, you know, MRI guided surgery that was incision free and didn't require a hospital stay and really was at least every all things considered uh some of the side effects weren't an issue um it was a relief um and i would look forward to um trying to figure out how to make that happen when did you receive the treatment that was uh july 2023 and um it was um it's really simple. Uh, you know, a lot of this technology is all MRI guided. So I got an MRI before the surgery just to map out uh, where the robot and the, um, the technology would have to focus. And then that following Monday, I was in for about an hour and a half um, and then out that afternoon and actually went to dinner uh, with friends and family that night. That's incredible. Did you ever think you would be able to have a surgical procedure and then go out to dinner right afterwards? No, I didn't. But it, you know, it seemed right. I mean, it seems like where we are today, there should be technologies like this. I and mean, it's kind of like, um, you know, the, I don't know if you've ever seen Star Trek, but they use the little wand tricorder thing and they cure you. Cure you right. We should be there or at least close to that. And this is the closest to that that I can think of. Can you walk um, our audience through what it was like the day of treatment in case they're thinking about this procedure for their own situation? Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I think this is the, the beauty of it all is that, you know, um, it's kind of a, what my doctors have described as a more modern treatment pathway to understand, you know, prostate cancer, prostate disease, uh, even BPH and things like that. I didn't get an MRI guided um, biopsy, but you know I think that's what people, the standard of care should be now, uh, using um, uh, the magnets to understand you know where your cancer is or where your disease is, and then uh, being able to map that out. I think the technology now has got an AI guided um, feature that I, that wasn't available when I got it. But, um, you know, obviously it helping, helping the doctor make the best decisions to map out the procedure. So when you walk in um, the facility, you know, they're ready for you. Um, they explain the procedure. Um, they tell you how long you're going to be under and they roll you into the MRI. And then at about an hour and a half later, I was waking up. And they keep you a while just to monitor you just like they do with any kind of anesthesia. But then I was free to go. The only thing I was carrying with me was a catheter for about for about a week, and that's that was hard to get used to. But the I didn't have an overnight stay at a hospital, which anytime you stay overnight, there's all sorts of things that you're subject to and could happen. So I was pleased with that, and then just had to take care of the catheter for about a week, and then I was good to go. How was recovery? Was it, did you have any pain or was it just, you know, the discomfort of the catheter? Exactly, Allison, just the discomfort of the catheter. I mean, it was you're just not used to that kind of thing. So, um, and just taking care of that as the main worry after that. And then, like I said, I was back in the gym and then on vacation with my kids within 10 days, so. Oh, wow, yeah, that's amazing. Did you talk about your experience with um, other friends or family members and encourage them to look into this or just keep up with their monthly or their annual screenings? I'm kind of an evangelist with this thing. It's, it's kind of because it just seems like so right. And so many men, um, you know, are I mean, one in eight men you know, can end up with prostate cancer. One in four African-American men and and veterans have a high incidence as well. So it's um, it's the kind of thing where the awareness just needs to be elevated. So for me, telling my family, my friends, I've I've sent at least three or four people 
uh, to consult with the folks at um, Profound and Tulsa uh, since since the operation. I'm sure that's so helpful, and I'm sure they're grateful to have you um, share your experience so then they don't have to go through those more invasive treatments. Right, right. Uh, it's it's been it's been kind of a, a a labor of love, so to speak, to to be able to share the experience. It's you know, it's a very personal one, but sometimes we need to talk about things that aren't so glamorous, like um, the idea with some of these other treatments that you're wearing diapers that um, you're having to suffer from ED. Uh, people just need to know that there's other options out there. And most insurance providers cover focus ultrasound treatment for prostate cancer, but yours did not. So can you talk about how you navigated that? Well, I guess um, most insurance did it cover it. So, I mean, uh, so I had to uh, navigate that to figure out how I could pay for it. But um, and, you know, I applied through um, the hospital that I went through and they were able to help me with it. But the good news is that uh, at least the Tulsa procedure has been approved for coverage from Medicare starting January 2025. So there's really no reason for people not to look into Tulsa. The only thing we have to do is to get more Tulsa centers out there and the word out that this is the should be the standard of care. Well, you've been cancer free and healthy for a year now, and you were even able to get involved in advocacy work by attending the Capitol Hill fly-in where you shared about your experience and talked about, you know, focus ultrasound treatment. So what was that like? That was fun. You know, I grew up in Washington, D.C., kind of still live in the area and had, you know, friends whose parents were congressmen and worked on the Hill and everything. But I really never had... Uh, been on the Hill to actually see how the Hill worked. And um, so the opportunity to talk about this and talk about other technologies that are focused ultrasound related and to be able to advocate for um, legislation or pending legislation to talk to people about how this um, the technology really is um, on the forefront uh, was was fantastic. I got to see my own senator or visit their office and other Congress people that were advocating for legislation. So hopefully that just made a slight bit of difference to hear a real human, a real story uh, behind how the focus ultrasound can help. And what would you say to other men who may be considering focus ultrasound treatment? I would say, you know, yeah, there are different technologies out there, uh, but... This one is incision free. The result uh, at least uh, seem to be more reliable and there's no hospital stay involved. So I think it's like outpatient uh, procedure that got the highest level of coverage approved. So it seems to it seems to point to the direction that this should be the emerging standard of care for prostate cancer and prostate disease. The best thing is when, as, as, as you're finding out about um, your PSA levels or if it's elevated, I would advocate for MRI-focused um, biopsy uh, just because the old way is just kind of antiquated. Um, I wish there was more of a focus on um, just this whole modern treatment pathway using focus ultrasound and MRI to guide you through the whole process. As a matter of fact, you know, I still go and get an MRI every six months just to check. And the beauty of this treatment, the Tulsa treatment, is that if anything ever reappeared, I can go back and get the same procedure. And that's not true with the other technologies with radiation and, and uh, prostatectomy as far as I, I know. Well, thank you so much, Robert, for sharing your story with us. We really appreciate it and appreciate the advocacy work that you're doing. Well, great. Let me know how, how I can help um, help you guys at the uh, Curing with Sound broadcast any other time. This episode of Curing with Sound has been presented by the Focus Ultrasound Foundation. If you'd like to learn more about Focus Ultrasound or the foundation, visit our website at fussfoundation.org. You can also sign up for our newsletter and follow us on social media.
Be sure to subscribe to the Curing with Sound podcast so you don't miss the latest information about Focus Ultrasound. You can also rate and review the show.